There's not one redeeming nice character in the whole show. I'm drinking, having an affair, having an affair, drinking. I was supposed to die after the first five episodes. Dallas and the stories you never knew about the stars of South Fork. I started crying, going, what have I done? Why Patrick Duffy quit the show, his infamous shower scene, and his mom and dad's brutal killing. My parents were murdered when I came back on the show. Larry Hagman's real-life battle with liver cancer. I don't fear death, I fear pain, but not death. Our rare new interview with Priscilla Presley. So I'm walking into this thing, oh my God, it's going to be a cat fight as soon as I walk in. Charlene Tilton's topless photo shoot and why she was kicked off the show. It was not my choice, I do know that. I was shocked. Victoria Principal's obsessed fans and her heartbreak over the death of her former lover, Andy Gibb. To this day, I have trouble comprehending that he's not here. And the day an armed man crashed the studio gates. The indications are that he came here indeed to commit suicide. The contract battles, the death of Jock Ewing, the stars of Dallas, and the real-life soap opera behind the scenes. Everybody was pretty sleazy. And, and there was nothing like uh, on television like that. This is Entertainment Tonight, the most watched entertainment news program in the world. Hello, and welcome to Entertainment Tonight's Dallas Secrets of South Fork. I'm Mark Steiner. And I'm Jan Carl. At first, Dallas was only supposed to be a five-episode miniseries. But when audiences got a good dose of the greed, blackmail, sex, and ruin that the oil-rich Ewings dished out, they were hooked. <laughs> Everybody that I talk to has their little favorite person. Everybody was pretty sleazy. And, and there was nothing like uh, on television like that. And there has been nothing on TV like it ever since. For 13 seasons, millions of viewers made Dallas their favorite destination. And that was a shock to most of the cast who only counted on that original five-week run. I just said, hey, five weeks is great. And then, oh, well, maybe another six weeks, that's even better. And I said, well, maybe we got a chance at this thing. The audience grew slowly. Dallas didn't hit number one until its third year, but everything else had gone very quickly. The date on the pilot script, the first year of pilot script, was December 10th, 1977, and we were in Dallas shooting five episodes February 1st, six weeks later. It was very fast. David Jacobs had only been working in television about a year when he was asked by CBS to create a primetime saga. They also asked me to think about something for Linda Evans, who was under contract. And then the piece turned out to be too much of an ensemble piece. They were looking for a starring vehicle for Linda Evans. But Larry Hagman loved the concept after his wife read the pilot and brought it to his attention. I heard this hoop from the other room. She says, Larry, this is it. There's not one redeeming nice character in the whole show. Let's do this. So I read it and I thought, oh, this is great. Now is the time to be scared. In the beginning, the delightfully evil J.R. was just a secondary character, and Larry's I Dream of Jeannie Pass almost kept him from getting the role. Larry Hagman? <laughs> Larry Hagman's the major, you know. I mean, I, I, I didn't think of Larry Hagman as, a, as an edgy actor. As soon as we, uh, uh, we met him, he came up and meet us, and he stood there in the door in his Stetson and boots. I mean, he, he, was, he was the guy. The role of J.R.'s younger brother, Bobby, came down to a two-horse race. The producers first considered Steve Keneally, but he wound up as the womanizing ranch hand Ray Krebs. Patrick Duffy, fresh from the man from Atlantis, was cast as the earnest Bobby, but it was originally a short-term part. It was supposed to be Romeo and Juliet. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to die after the first five episodes. Duffy's Juliet was Victoria Principal. As Pamela Barnes Ewing, she was the wife of Bobby, but the sister of Don't Cliff Barnes, the I'm Ewing's strong. arch enemy. A very dear friend of mine, who has since passed away, brought the script over and left it at my house with a note that said, Pamela Barnes Ewing is you. And I read it, and I thought he was absolutely right. Victoria, of all the character, of all the actors, went after the role most aggressively. And if she didn't like the reading, she, there'd be a phone call from the agent, she wants to come back, do it again. And uh, that kind of determination just sort of became part of the character. The producer and director asked me if I would wear my own clothes for that episode because they had never gotten that image of Pam out of their mind. Who's number one, right? Her or me? At just 17, Charlene Tilton was equally determined to play the teenage sex bot Lucy, even though the producers wanted Stephanie Kramer, who would later star in Hunter. I read the list of characters, and I read the uh, description of Lucy, and I said, I 
to have that part. It's mine. Just no two ways about it. The late Mary Fran, who became Bob Newhart's TV wife, was originally cast as JR's alcoholic wife, Sue Ellen. But Linda Gray stepped in and turned playing a drunk into an art. That was fabulous for me. I loved it. It was my, my favorite part. Then it got a little old because I went to the producers and I said, I'm drinking, having an affair, having an affair, drinking, drinking and having an affair. I have two things to do. And they, I'll never forget what they said to me. They said, yes, but you do it so well. With acclaimed stage actress Barbara Bel Geddes, Jim Davis, and Ken Kercheval in place, the original cast was complete. And during its 356 episodes, Dallas would feature more than 100 actors, including even Brad Pitt. Priscilla Presley signed on for the sixth season, but in a rare interview, she tells E.T. it wasn't as easy as it sounds. My na manager submitted my name, and we were refused. I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible, you know. Well, I hadn't really been an, an actress. I hadn't been seen. Once she proved herself, Priscilla soon doubted her decision when she saw the amount of work she had in her first episode. I, oh my God, I started crying, going, what have I done? A year, I've signed for a year, and I have all these lines to do. Priscilla says Larry helped her feel at home. His presence on the show was as large as his characters, but far more positive. Without a single, really flagship character, to draw everybody else along point lines of interest and plot. The show wouldn't have lasted 13 years. Larry is single-handedly the reason the show has stayed on the air for 13 years. The fact that he was never nominated for an Emmy Award just blows my mind. Larry pulled the cast together, often leading them out to dinner. We would go to his favorite choice, Chinese, and Larry would walk in and go, Hi, remember me? Major Nelson, I dream a genie. Well, me and my friends here, we're doing this show called Dallas. We'd sure like to have a table if you could get us one. And together, they created a TV classic that spawned many imitators, including Dynasty, which was originally called Oil. Even today, the show is enjoyed around the world in reruns, but nobody loved Dallas more than the cast. When the family was around the dining table, they knew, the director knew, playtime. I can swear to you, in 13 years, there was not one day that I wasn't so excited to get to work that I l always left the house earlier than I wanted to, just so I could get in the car, get there, and start having fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's most, uh, the most fun I ever had, and a lot, lot simpler than comedy. Coming up on Dallas, The Secrets of South Fork. Victoria Principal's problem with obsessive fans and her hidden battle with her weight. It was terrible being fat. Charlene Tilden's traumatic divorce and her new job as a celebrity gossip columnist. I know what it is like to be on the other end of the tabloid. Priscilla Presley talks about how she became a Dallas star and her troubled marriage to Elvis. When someone is on pills, you can see the self-destructiveness. That's next. Welcome back to Entertainment Tonight's Dallas, The Secrets of South Fork. As Pam Ewing, Victoria Principal married into the wealthy South Fork clan. Now, as the show rose in the ratings, Principal found she had some fans that got out of control, forcing her to hire private security. We said it'd get better, and instead it's getting worse. Not all the attention bestowed on Victoria was welcome. The now 50-year-old actress was targeted by more than one deranged fan. A dangerous situation that called for Hollywood's top security man. Thankfully enough, I had brought Gavin DeBecker in um, my life quite early in my career. And Gavin DeBecker, on more than one occasion, uh, one occasion was responsible for saving my life. Playing the beautiful, good-natured wife of Bobby Ewing marked Victoria's Hollywood comeback. Just three years earlier, she had quit the business, giving up a career that had begun with so much promise. I started out in 1971. My first film was Judge Roy Bean directed by John Huston, starring Paul Newman. And by 1975, I was very unhappy with myself. And I felt that I couldn't make the corrections to myself as a human being in front of the camera. But Victoria had already made one correction before quitting acting and becoming a talent agent. As she told us in 1989, she had to come to grips with her weight problem. It was terrible being fat. I felt like I, I was a prisoner in my own body. And I was so embarrassed that I hid more and more because I didn't want people to... My own agent didn't know how fat I was because I wouldn't come into town. 
Victoria eventually sought help from a therapist and a nutritionist to deal with her problems. She also worked on her image as a party girl, a reputation she acquired because of some of the well-connected men she dated, including Frank Sinatra, Desi Arnaz Jr., and the Maharaja. There was a time in my life when I was capable of burning the candles at both ends, and, and, and there were times when I did, but it wasn't as consistently, nor as constantly, nor for as many years as, as the media has made it out to be. After a brief marriage to an actor several years her junior whom she met on the set of Dallas, Victoria, age 31, embarked on a highly publicized May-December relationship with BG brother Andy Gibb, age 23. But his drug abuse forced Victoria to end the 13-month relationship. Andy was devastated by the breakup and died six years later of a heart ailment. Talking about Andy in 1989 still caused Victoria visible pain. It was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do in my life, and it's not something I'll ever look back on um, easily. To this day, I have trouble comprehending that he's not here. After a three-year courtship, Victoria married plastic surgeon Harry Glassman in 1985. They'll celebrate their 15th anniversary this year, and Victoria says the good doctor totally supported her decision to leave Dallas. With all her subsequent successes, producing TV movies, authoring books, and running her skincare line, it's a decision she's never regretted. I got to find out what I lived in fear of not knowing. I didn't want to look back on my life and say what I might have done, what I might have been, what I might have been capable of. It was important to me to go out and answer that. Coming up on Dallas, the secrets of South Fork. How the cast reacted to the death of their co-star. He had a series of migraine headaches over the years. And uh, later on, um, this was diagnosed as brain cancer. Why a man invaded the Dallas studio and was suspected of wanting to kidnap one of its stars. Larry Hagman's contract holdout and the producer's plan to replace him. And they said, oh, we're going to bring in, you know, this actor or that actor. And JR's real life and death drama. This is a second chance. <laughs> Let me tell you. That's next.